Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tavern Tales 2015 here at DreamHack Bucharest. We're having a lot of fun and a lot of good Hearthstone games. My name is Nimsh, I'm your host, and I'm joined by Forsen and Forsen Boys and Trollden. Hello, Trollden. Hey. Oh, Trollden, what are you doing here? Uh, nice to be here. I'll try to do my best to make you look like you know something about Hearthstone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you know a lot about Hearthstone, especially the funny and lucky moments. So if you guys don't know Trollden, this is the guy that's making the funny and lucky moments every week. Yeah. And a lot of other good stuff. Yeah. The reason they started doing the, the pro plays as well, right? Yeah. Mm? New series? Yeah, I'm really serious about that. Mm? You, know, you, you, you can think that I'm not serious because I like, added you to the first play, but... <laughs> wow. The shots. shots. Oh, shots. man, you're I popular. Yeah, I'm yeah. famous. Nice. All right, uh, we started the tournament with Life Coach versus Impact, and Life Coach is out of the tournament. Impact advances. Mm -hmm. yep. So A bit of an upset, some might say, uh, but many people do not know about Impact, so that's probably one of the reasons. We talked a bit to Life Coach, and he was a bit disappointed uh, not having too much experience playing against the, uh, the Green Patron Warriors, so hopefully for the next tournament he practices against it some. Yeah, he plays more, and uh, we try to convince him to play it on his stream as well. So that would be pretty good to, to see. Mm -hmm. And uh, But right now, another amazing match. We'll have Temple Gara, Temple Storm Gara versus yep. Nihilum Nihilum Lothar. Lothar. Yep. Oh man, what do we know about Gara? Like, look at this guy. This is a previous champion. Trollman. Yeah, yeah, he's a previous champion, and he the on the second time he, he got the second place mm -hmm. I think yeah he did so he's a, he's a really nice player and member Th this of is Temple this Storm. is his arena so to speak yeah. this is where he brings home the gold I think he has the biggest responsibility because he really wants to win this one mm -hmm. yeah I mean Gar is one of those underrated players that doesn't really get that much popularity but he has been performing pretty good in tournaments not so much recently maybe but he has been he has had strong finishes in a lot of really big tournaments top 4 wca yeah that's a, a that's a big no, th he was actually top uh, top 3 i believe he was third at wca yeah he, yeah he killed RDU in the in that third fourth place match yeah and uh, obviously the dreamhack champion from uh, dreamhack bucharest uh, finalist for the second one but then again, it's Lothar, and uh, Lothar is doing great recently. He was top eight uh, seed story cup. He was second in the, um, in the King Queen tournament, and he is on a roll. He uh, is not actually invited to this tournament. Lothar, Lothar is a person who plowed through the groups. Like he went through all both groups yesterday, and he's here now facing Gara again because they did play uh, last time. I believe Gara won and, and kept advancing to the to the finals. So this is a very important match for Lothar. Yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, he had a lot of help though from his team, Nihilum. Like they, they helped each other with deck selections. Uh, as you know, you can change your deck list between every round of this tournament. So having good teammates that can support you, that are already in the top eight, that doesn't have to think about their own, uh, or top 16, that doesn't even have to think about their own decks, uh, is really, really good for Lothar. All right. And some players might be predictable with the decks they bring into the game, so it's uh, kind of helpful to change up the decks in the style. For example, if you know that someone's playing Freeze Mage, someone got a lot of healing in the Paladin deck, for example, that, so that helped. Oh yeah, definitely. Trollden, uh, what can you tell me about the Green Patrons, by the way? Uh, because you are doing a lot of lucky and funny moments. Are you happy with Blackrock Mountain and what's happening right now? Um, I'm really happy about Blackrock Mountain because I thought that the cards weren't that... A lot of cards that weren't so good, like Green Patron. A lot of people said that that card was underrated and Ooh. no one's going to use it. But uh, at the end, it, it one of the most popular cards mm -hmm. right now. and most fun ones so you always want to see it in the, in the game you always want to spam everyone get in here so yeah all the dank memes so we see an aggro hunter for the first time broadcasted on stream if i'm not mistaken i've seen we um i think we've seen hunter yesterday from oh Sixo. yeah we, yeah we saw one hunter actually from sixo yeah that's right so both players brought hunter though both gara and uh, lothar uh, Gara does not surprise me, and uh, oh, Alothar actually as well. Ga Gara is a, an excellent hunter player. He, he showed efficiency with the hunter before. He was getting le legend easily with his hunter with very high win rate. Do you like coining out double void caller here, uh, void walker? I mean, he has no turn two play unless he top decks. You don't want to play abuse. Oh, he did top deck the knife juggler. That's so huge. And uh, I like the play by the way uh, because you do. 
you will be able to use one with Abuser Sergeant to, to trade in something, and uh, another one will be stopping damage from some other other things. Like, if you assume that you're going to lose it to the Glaive Zuka, you still have the wall, and you might not have time later. Yeah. You can always coin it out later whenever you want, though, and it doesn't do much damage. You, you know, like he could have played it the next turn if he wanted to. I mean, it's, I, I think it's uh, a bit of a mistake to coin it out, but maybe he just thought that it's a really good opener against the hunter to mm. prevent the early damage that might income. And this is a problem, though, with the mad scientist. Uh, if he played it's the knife juggler, uh, the mad scientist, like it's it's. Uh, the explosive trap is gonna come out for sure, unless he plays something weird like snake trap. Let's talk about this matchup a bit, like from the zoo perspective. So, um, Gara's perspective. How do you how do you win the matchup? What are you afraid of? Uh, well, basically, you're afraid of explosive trap and unleash the hounds. Those are the two key cards to beat hunters as uh, uh, to beat Sue as hunter. Uh, but he, he he goes for the. It's an okay play, actually, because you don't sacrifice your knife juggler to the explosive trap, but you still trade up, so it's like, it's okay. It's important also because right now Gara doesn't, like, even if there is an explosive trap, he doesn't know, it might be a snake trap still, but uh, if this is explosive trap, he doesn't have to really attack. Like, he can wait, he can trade minions if the minions appear. If minions do not appear, you still have that Defender of Argus to, um, well, Defender is not doing much now. Like, even if you play Defender of 4, those minions are still going to die to expose the trap. I think you do test for the trap. Uh, well, actually, with the Eagle Hornbow, that's yeah. awkward. Without Eagle Hornbow, I would definitely attack and test for the trap to know what's up. But then you don't want to give another durability point. But what's that? Uh, what's the trap? That's probably explosive, right? Yeah, it is almost certainly explosive. And uh, he's going to play the Knife Juggler here. Um, and next turn is probably going to be an Argus follow-up, and he wants to trade. He, he wants to trade his um, Voidwalker and the Abuser with something uh, on the board, so he doesn't lose them for free to the Explosive Trap. That's the plan he has here. And I'm not sure who the pressure is on in this matchup, right? It's kind of awkward right now because everyone's waiting for the opponent to mm -hmm. do something. Yeah, it's kind of a stalemate here for sure. I think this favors the Zoo. Because Hunter wants to be the aggressive one and be able to get mm -hmm. the damage in, and then use uh, explosive the trap, unleash the hounds to your advantage, and then push with damage and win the game. Yeah, I mean, uh, the the Sioux definitely has the stronger minions like uh, Doom Guards and Sea Giants and stuff like that. So the clock is definitely on the on the Hunter here, and he's gonna go ahead and quick shot that, even though it will die to explosive trap, and that makes Lothar thinks, is this not explosive trap? Is this actually snake trap? But it. It is Explosive Trap. Defender of Argus is interesting because with Defender of Argus, you can just play it and pass, and then next turn, get another Defender of Argus and get one of the minions outside one of the minion, range. yeah. Mm. That was probably his weakest spot right now because he only had one Defender of Argus and pretty not useful in this position. Mm -hmm. Big Game Hunter and Barber Overwhelming, so this top deck kind of saves him against the Explosive Trap because it lets him buff the minion up to 3 health and he doesn't die to it. Absolutely. Um, he still, s like, Animal Companion here, what can he actually get? Can he get something useful? Misha is not uh, good because you will just trade your 2-2 and 3-2 into the Misha and then get lose nothing to the Explosive Trap. This is really awkward because as a Hunter you do want to, you don't want to get, uh, to give the Warlock the chance to trade into your minions. Mm -hmm. So I think the correct course of action will be just hero powering. You could uh, opt to play the Hunt Creeper as well. Yeah, uh, uh, that's right. Because if you draw into something like Unleash, then doing that one damage to three minions, like it will do so much. There's a Doom Guard. Doom Guard not doing much for now, and also because of the Hunted Creeper, there is a, a chance to attack into it. But Lothar still doesn't know if it's a Snake Trap or Explosive Trap. A Th Snake Trap actually made its way back to the to the Face Hunters, and uh, we've seen even like last weekend people still playing it. There is a, a somewhat of a nice play here. You could actually power overwhelm your Voidwalker, and you could Argus the other two to deal 6, uh, 9, uh, 13 damage to face, and then you have Doomguard next turn with only a BGH, which is fairly useless, so you don't mind discarding that. I, I think that's what we're going to see here. I actually like it, like just taking initiative, going for face, and uh, doing massive damage. Yeah, he will take 13 damage, and then next turn, Doomguard is added on, like it's a lot of damage and 
the the suit player is still at 26 health. And the the board is full as well because you just play Argus, so you do have like um, a two two, a two one, and a four four one on board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. He decides to go with the Valley and clear the board. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think about it? Because uh, hunter, the problem with the Hunter is that he keeps pressuring Warlock with hero power and Warlock keeps tapping, so mm -hmm. he's going to be pretty low and then he can burn him with cards like uh, Kill Command. And like, he's playing with fire here because if there's an Unleash here, that can really bite him. Uh, but he's going to set up for an Argus next turn on the BGH and uh, the 2-2 two -two Argus. I think it's all right. Like One of the key strategies for the zoo is just to far fight for the board presence and uh, win board control and for that just to finish the game. So it's just following on the original strategy rather than taking a chance uh, for a good burst. But uh, I, I like more going for face. Still, this is valid and uh, I don't think this is wrong. So here, uh, so it's really awkward for Gara. Uh, for for Lothar actually with the with Hunter, yeah, I think he used hero power here. I think he used hero power. Yeah, just hero power and hope that the uh, zoo is not going to draw defender Argus or like doesn't have defender Argus. But yeah. we already know that there is one. Well, but even with defender Argus, uh, he's going to lose Void Walker and a free one. But then again, he's going to deal eight points of damage. And we'll have two big taunts. No, he's gonna use the power overwhelming for sure. Oh, this uh, is awkward. Yeah, a lot of awkward plays here. Uh, double Doom Guard is not something you want to see in your hand ever. Well, Defender Vargas power overwhelming then. And the Squire. Yeah. So he's gonna play it in middle. He's gonna power overwhelm the 3 1 to get uh, 7 damage from that, which would have died to Explosive Trap. So that's 15 points of damage? 15 points of damage. Pretty good, pretty good. And you are left with 2 taunts and a, and a kind of big board. Yeah, and it still taunts with 1 HP, so he really needs that Unleash soon. Mm. Still, I think even though he top decked another Doom Guard, it's not as bad for him because hunters don't play any heals and mm -hmm. he's not going to taunt anything, so we can just finish him off with other cards. Yeah, so we see the play and uh, the question is whether or not he wants to play the Squire or if he wants to keep it in his hand to discard that instead of the second Doom Guard next turn. But he opts to play it right away. I bet he's done the math and uh, it could be useful. He probably thinks that he can top deck another one and two drop mm -hmm. and then... If he top decks an abusive, that's lethal if he doesn't trade here. Uh, well, Lothar really needed Unleash, and Gara made a play just assuming that there is no Unleash, no Unleash top deck, he's just taking his chances, and he's positioning himself well. Another Explosive Trap or Unleash would have been good, but he just doesn't have those cards right now. Do you guys think that wasting, not attacking with the bow the second time was uh, kind of like a mistake that let um, Gara? get a better boat position yeah he, he, I mean he was being a bit greedy get he wanted that second charge really badly I don't think you can uh, expect your opponent to have a second Argus that soon uh, so he didn't feel like playing around that yeah I feel like Lothar's line of play was correct uh, you, you don't expect a second Argus also you expect giving yourself time uh, Warlock is using hero power to, uh, to, to reduce its health you're using your hero power. So, so Lothar was doing something, like he was actually dealing damage with hero power, and the chance of getting the Unleash the Hounds was, uh, was pretty decent. So if he top takes an abusive here, uh, or a wolf, it's game. Is it? Why? It's, uh, yeah. No, 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 it's five, it's ten. It's, it's game. No, he needs uh, three. Oh, he needs three damage. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, he's one damage off in that case. On the other hand, Lothar, uh, Lothar has like three, five... 10. Lothar is really close to getting lethal. Like, um, let's say the board is cleared. If he gets a huffer, it's 9, 12. Yeah, if he gets a, it's a huffer, it's over. Uh, I think he should, he should play Sea Giant yeah. though and grab for the next turn lethal. What do you think? I think Sea Giant is okay here. Uh, y otherwise, you'd, you'll just discard uh, your other cards. Yeah, Sea Giant is nice. Sea Giant and then trade. Um, you don't even tap. Definitely not tap. No. You know that Hunter already has five damage with a bow. It's Hunter Creeper. Hunter Creeper is lethal as well, I believe. That's five ten. Um, what? 
100 creeper. No, 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 no. creeper will not be lethal. All right, so uh, Huffer. Huffer is lethal, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, I believe so. Um, All right. Time to Huffer, Lothar. Mm -hmm. Razor Huffers, e guys. Even uh, Misha. Uh, is that good enough? Uh, no, it's not good enough. Unless, actually, Knife Juggler and Misha. If uh, it kills a 2-1 or a 1-1, one -one, it yeah. will buy him one but more turn. But if he plays this, instead of just playing Animal Companion, Huffer is not lethal, right? Yeah, all right, so this is not a Huffer. Oh, wait, Huffer was lethal, actually. Huffer, Huffer was lethal for sure. Yeah, 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 Huffer was lethal. Huffer was 100% lethal. You don't, you, don't, you don't need the hero power. Yeah. He has to kill command now. Otherwise I think he, he could, loses. No, he could go for uh, the juggler, oh, juggler yeah. uh, on either 2-1 or 1-1. One, one. Yeah, but it's 50-50. Yeah. Well, if, he does, if he misses it, he's dead. And... Uh, Oh. oh, so that's it. That's exactly never lucky, baby. Rich. That's eleven points of damage. Just play Doomguard, kill Misha, and then you have exactly eleven on he the board. He got lucky now with those boombots yesterday. Yeah. Did. Oh man, what a start of Lothar versus Gara match. So Gara, if he can spot lethal just by playing the Doomguard, <laughs> he does it. It's taking game number one versus Lothar with his Zoo versus Hunter. That was a tough lethal. I think even I saw <laughs> that one. Oh man, Gara's so happy that he spotted that lethal, man. <laughs> I think he's more happy about the knife jugglers. <laughs> 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 you gotta appreciate the lethals. Alright, so for Gara, Warlock is locked and um, Lothar still has his mage, warrior and hunter. We actually asked Lothar yesterday, is he going to play the warrior after going 1-5 with warrior? I, uh, well, it's not going to play double brawl again, I think. Yeah, uh, well, he might have cut one or even two. Mm -hmm. What kind of warrior is that, by the way? Is that a control or? Uh, yeah, control. he was playing. He was playing control. He was playing double brawl because of the um, uh, green, green patterns patron. flying mm -hmm. around. But mm. uh, he ended up playing control warrior versus control warrior, which only uh, made the chat sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Among other things. Forsen turned back to the, the real Forsen. Yeah. <laughs> Came back to his roots. Uh, okay, so um, what do you, f well, first, what do you think about the matchups though? Like um, for Gara, there's still the Shaman and the Hunter. I believe this face Hunter. Gara was playing a lot of face Hunter. I yeah, I'm not sure what kind of Shaman this is. I uh, I haven't seen Gara play the Fell River Shaman, so it might be just some standard. really standard list. Yeah, uh, yeah. He likes to play Shaman. Big mistake in my opinion, unless you play the Fell River, because that's probably the strongest one right now. Um, but we'll see. Maybe he has some new exciting build that we haven't seen before. Merlok Shaman. <laughs> Gara Shaman. Well, Gara is the best Shaman. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Otherwise, he wouldn't call himself the best Shaman, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't lie. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Shaman has a good chance to win versus Warrior. If uh, if does this, in fact, the Contra Warrior. Unless Lothar actually changed to Green Patron. And then the Face Hunter for Gara has um, a mi good chance at the mirror. Like 50-50 chance. Then, um, well, Mage. Freeze, if, the, if the Mage is a Freeze Mage from Lothar, and Warrior is a Contra Warrior. Maybe Hunter is actually a deck that can lose to everything. Yeah, it is for sure. Uh, but uh, you know, with Hunter Mirror, <laughs> it's like 50-50, yeah. Uh, there is a guy who does statistics on Twitter. Uh, I think this guy's Toast or something. And he, he's been doing statistics for the last two tournaments, and Hunter was one of the worst performing decks. Actually. Yeah, it's been uh, taking a hit uh, quite recently. Also, Paladin was pretty bad, and I don't think I saw Freeze there because no one plays Freeze. Mm. <laughs> she Freeze was like below <laughs> everything. All right, guys, game number two. So standard Shaman it is. Um, Haunted Creeper, Horus Golems, both staples almost. Uh, some might debate whether Horus Golem... He might play, be playing the Power Mace as well. Like the, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely possible, and I think he's actually doing that. And we saw that he picked he up that zombie yeah. yeah, It's insane versus Hunter. So Lothar finally getting Unleash the Hounds. Oh wait, the game is already over. I wouldn't say it's over. Uh, it's definitely no, I mean hard. Like but with this curve, uh, it's pretty much over. Uh, but anything can happen. Good. Good top decks from the Hunter, can bring him back. That Fire Elemental is a dead draw for now. Well, this matchup originally was really good versus Hunter, uh, like for Hunter. Hunter was having an advantage because you do have Amnesia, you do have Explosive Chow. I still think that's the case, but if you top deck uh, Zombie Chow into Haunted Creeper and Horus Golem, of course you're going to have a hard time with this matchup. 
as a hunter player. He just needs a four drop and he wins the game. The perfect curve. Well, Zuka is something. Yeah. Um, he will be able to kill you have to think. Storm. You have to think about your next turn, though. Um, if you play Glevzuka here and the Leper Gnome, then you have four mana next turn, and you have two chargers for three mana. It's not quite that efficient, actually. Maybe you you opt to play uh, Leper Gnome Hero Power just to get that damage. I don't know. How, much, how long do you think this game will go on? Uh, not very long. Like uh, Looking at this, I think Lothar cannot expect Defender Vargas. Mm -hmm. If there is a Defender Vargas, he's so dead. But uh, I think he just has to close his eyes and go Glyph Zuka, Leper Gnome, go face. Five damage to face. And then you get the Leper Gnome. Yeah, he was, he was taking a time, uh, a bit of time there thinking about this next turn. But he, he thinks that it's fine to play a Wolf Rider on turn four, even if you don't get to use your hero power. He might even consider oh hero power. God. Well, that's taunt, and that taunt is annoying. Okay, some mad scientist is also. Wow. A I like that. Attacks. I like that a lot. That's killing two birds with one stone, or mm -hmm. killing one frog with one spider. And there is the explosive trap. So <laughs> that was quite awkward. Uh, it, we're most likely gonna see explosive trap and hero power here. Uh, that well, sets up for unleash and like wolf rider possibilities if he doesn't attack. At least he had power. something to do on turn four. Yep. So thanks for that hex, bro. And it's not terrible because he will be able to unleash, but um. And that's two points of damage. So Gara already is 17. Yeah, as I said, Hunter is really favored in this matchup. Even though that was an insane start by Gara, uh, Lothar is uh, in a pretty good spot here, I would say. I oh, would can play and the hounds and I get insane value. Yeah, I think he's gonna go face here with everything. Oh yeah, you have to oh, go face. Always face. But would you really, smork. would I'm you really unleash? Like I would like actually just Wolf Rider face. No, 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 because then he will just trade with a one one. Uh, now he has to trade all his minions with the hounds, and then if he doesn't have the lightning storm, and then you can play Wolf Rider. Why I would do that is because you still have you deal three damage, so you deal one less damage this turn. Um, he he still has three minions next turn, so you still have the big unleash, and you roll a halfer, you roll Misha, or you roll Leok. So if you roll Leok, you double the damage, and I would expect them to play one minion at least. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're going to, but uh, you might get, like, Huffer and Wolf Rider next turn. That's really good as well. Do you guys, <coughs> do you guys think that mm, not, like, knowing the hand of Gaara, Anatron would be a better play? Because it stops most of the burst in that he has on his side right now. Right I now, Anatron? Yes. You, you want to... Uh, oh, he's actually going to go for Anatron. I think that the better play is playing Fire Elemental or Sky Golem and... Uh, Pushing for win because you can play an Oitron next turn. There's I mean, there's a couple of things to consider. First, how much damage can Hunter produce with six mana, uh, and uh, if it's lethal for you. So let's say there is a um, Huffer plus kill command that's nine, so you're still alive. But then you put yourself for a lethal spot because he will just yeah. But how are you gonna win this game without any power on the board? And that's the second question you have mm. to ask yourself because I if you can't, then you have to risk it. I think Garo played uh, Anoitron just because he saw that Lothar has three cards in his hand and assuming that most of the cards are minions uh, is better. Like if he had minions and spells he would still kill him. But now that he has only minions he kind of won himself a few turns now. By the way here I think you just go uh, Arcane Golem and Wolf Rider. You no, you, you hero power and you kill command. Uh, that that leaves him at four, and then next turn you can uh, Wolf Rider and kill the Noyatron and the uh, Arcan Golem face. I like Arcan Golem Wolf Rider because you still have uh, Animal Companion and Kill Command for next turn, so you use the use the dog to to get the armor. Yeah, but it, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's uh, like if you lose your beast, uh, you can't you can't um, Animal Companion, Kill Command, and Hero Power next turn. And when you play Kill Command, you always want to play Hero Power in the same turn. Otherwise, it's like wasted damage, you know? Yeah, but the thing is, like, you will have them on 8. So you give yourself a chance to roll Huffer and win with the Kill Command. With this play. And he still has to kill Ar Arcane Golem and Wolf Rider. My, my play is 100% uh, uh, win uh, if he doesn't have another taunt. So you Kill Command the face, you use Hero Power. Yeah, and then so next turn, like and, and you pop the shield up with the dog after you use Kill Command. And the next turn you use both Wolf Rider, Arcane Golem. Golem. Yeah. All right, all right. But it's weak to uh, another taunt, and it's weak to um, uh, Healbot. 
Th this was a little bit weird because he doesn't kill him with kill command next turn. No. I think I think that's like the forces line of play is the best. Now, now, now the only thing he can do here is roll a huffer. Otherwise, he loses. So uh, I think my yeah mine was a bit better in the, in this scenario. Definitely. He can top deck something too. So ten, thirteen. No, he doesn't lose actually. He still has two turns. Oh, he won. Yeah, he won. Wow. Well, if you know you're going to top deck the owl. But he said he was still going to win. Like uh, there was not enough damage to kill him next turn. Well, it was like they, 16. It could have been. If yeah, he if, he, if he gets like a second rock biter or or a flame tongue or, or crackle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lava, lava burst. Oh man, that was a very dynamic game. I like it. I love yeah. aggro stuff. Both are just showing something to Gara. Kappa face. Oh man. All right. So uh, that's a one-one, and Lothar is going to tie the series with his uh, with his hunter. Gara best shaman. Uh, we are going to see more shaman of of Gara. Did you see like anything specific about this shaman, or was it just thunder? It was uh, a bit on the heavier side of the cost curve with sky golems. Um, I don't know which legendaries he used, but I think it was. Um, I would say Neptune and Alakir. Yeah, was, those are the most standard ones. Doctor Boom. Yeah, yeah, you have to play Doctor Boom. Um, so even though Gara had an amazing opening with Zombie Chow, Hunter Creeper, Harvest Golem, Face Hunter was still able to just deliver and uh, do the final blow. It was a little bit unbelievable because so some of you guys said that at the beginning that the game is won already. And then he managed to come back from that somehow. I guess good top decks. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, the I thing about Hunter. Like You can just abuse that unleash the Hounds and uh, just continue with your strategy. Every card you draw supports the strategy. Uh, Iron Beagle was another card that, that actually helped to win the game. Yeah, he drew really good after that. Uh, oh, it's a Hunter versus I think Mage? Yes, it's a Freeze Mage for Lothar, and that's a face... Wait, it actually it's not a face Hunter. It's, it's actually not a face Hunter. Yeah. Wait, what? Gaur likes to play the mid-range one for some reason. He can't just follow the meta like everyone else. Yeah, Gaur is the guy who is really greedy with his decks, and he's bringing his own brews. And it uh, worked. Like, the first DreamHack he won, um, he went through the Swiss single... Oh, it wasn't Swiss. Like, the rounds, the single elimination with his Taunt Druid. And that was one of the very first Taunt Druids that we've seen, known as Gaur Druid after that. Uh, last DreamHack, I feel like he also brought some, some of his own brews. Like, this guy is actually putting Deathwing into Paladin to get the Ashbringer value. You play yeah. Tyrion, you attack, you play Deathwing, you get Ashbringer, and you attack Ooh. with Ashbringer. We see a Kassan in the Freeze Mage. Oh. That's really interesting. To steal back your own Ice Block when they steal it with he's their gonna own He's going to steal the Snake Trap, Freezing Trap. Yeah, that's actually interesting. All right, so here Gara with a Hunter Creeper opening. What? How do you evaluate those hands? Forsen, you're the Freeze Mage Specialist. Tell me more. Well, it doesn't have a two drop, which is really bad. Uh, you want to loot Order of Mad Scientist uh, really badly. He doesn't even have an Arcane Intellect for turn three. The Ice Barrier is not that good versus uh, Midrange Hunter uh, as it is against Aggro. So this hand is a bit of a lackluster. Uh, you're just going to have to force to ping here, I think. But what do you think about the matchup in general? I remember that before Hunters were really favored against Freeze Mages, before mm -hmm. the Flare nerf that mm -hmm. everyone was playing it, but now how do you evaluate the I matchup? think Freeze Mage is uh, favored, uh, but it, you have to play good versus mid-range. It's, it's a bit more straightforward versus aggro, but mid-range you have to really uh, value your Frost Novas and uh, your Freezes for the 7 high mains. It's really interesting that Gara is playing double quick shot and a mid-range hunter. Yeah, it's really weird actually. And by now, like Lothar could have uh, thought like, "Hey, this is mid-range because I see a web spinner, which is not being played in face." But then after seeing quick shot, he might be like, "Wait a minute, what am I seeing here?" I've seen some variation of face hunter with web spinner. I don't think it's the best, but you know, people are playing it, so he might still think that this is aggro. He should assume this is aggro. I mean, Quick Shot is a kind of card that you want to go face with when you when you have an empty hand in an aggro deck. But mm -hmm. if you can look at it as a Frostbolt or a Dark Bomb, it's still a pretty value card. Yeah. So it, it's, it might be worth playing to get rid of early uh, threats, for example. I think you just like having double Quick Shot in hand will never al allow you to draw from both of them. So you still have to cast one. And this is preparing him to, to cast that quick shot, quick shot on turn 8, let's say. Yeah. 
I think that you want to ping the Haunted Creeper here, the 1-1, one, one, and then Blizzard next turn. Oh, he's opting to, to ping the Web Spinner, give him another draw. That they could have ended badly, but... Oh. And he has <laughs> the rest. Wow. Oh, this is going to be... This is so interesting. So, the thing is that you can't really uh, steal back your Ice Blocks um, from the Hunter player, because he's going to use that when he can kill uh, the Freeze Mage. Yeah, yeah, that Chasm Mystic will so that's be why so I don't important. Like, I, that's why I don't like Freeze Mage, uh, Kisani Freeze Mage. Well, we can still maybe see it if he... Smork? Smork. <laughs> 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 All right, guys are having fun. They're long-time friends, and uh, both of those guys are hilarious. So uh, this is not what I expected. Uh, definitely fun to see Kazan Mystic in uh, both of the decks. Mm -hmm. Being drawn because most of the time people just don't get them. Yeah. Emperor Russian, obviously the play here. Troll, do you have anything <laughs> to say about that? <laughs> Why is he Emperor Russian? His name is the Russian. What? Why? This is how you pronounce it now. Oh, okay. You didn't know? No, no, no. You learn something every day. I'm Russia, we, we pronounce it differently there. In Russia, the emperor pronounces you. I, I watch too many uh, anime series, so I'm pronouncing it Torison <laughs> or oh Torikun. So I think uh, Frost Nova is really nice here, but l like the Blizzard uh, procs the. Um, the Spiderling, so he has four damage actually, so there's a big possibility that the Russian will die. For Snowa, there's not so much possibility that they will die, but... Um, uh, there is a... F all right. Can I you just... Uh, what about like just ping for Snowa? Yeah, for ping for Snowa is a great play. Um, and the next turn you can possibly just clear with Blizzard. You could, you could even... Uh, you could even... Um, Frost Nova and Iceland's the the Savannah High Main and leave him at one and the next one you can ping and um, Blizzard. Yeah, that's a really good play. Yeah, that's actually pretty. Uh, is there? It? No, you won. Maybe. Oh, you can because the Blizzard is cheaper. Oh, yeah. Maybe he's thinking Torison about just <laughs> yeah changing everything. Maybe he's thinking about some kind of combo with. Uh, yeah, he's gonna go with Frost Nova. He does. He, he doesn't care about the. Uh, Secret, or maybe he does. He does. Why would you pick face? Are you going Agra? Yeah. I have no idea. I, mean, that's I guess he's going Agra considering the Pyrogas is at 8 and the Frostbolt and Iceland 0, so that will actually be 1722 damage. If he top deck something, he can kill him within two turns, so that's, uh, I guess, hmm, God, his hand doesn't look that great, and Witch the Hound is kind of useless in this matchup because maybe yeah. he doesn't play that doesn't play minions almost at all. A very important thing is that Garak cannot deal with this uh, Tori Sun. Nope. He just so yeah, it's so actually it's so devastating. Like, how much damage is there for uh, for Lothar next turn? Uh, he can't really use the Pyroblast, so it's only seven from hand. Uh, he can play Antonidas as well to get two fireballs, but he doesn't have an ice block, so he needs to keep freezing the board every turn. What the? Oh wow. my. He's Wait, but there's the Kazan! What Frost is this Frostbolt, secret? your own mad scientist! Oh my god, Force! <laughs> Who did that first? He did yeah, the right, Force. He's a copycat. Do you steal it now? Of you course you steal it! This is the only time you can use that's the a freezing. That's a freezing shot, by the way. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. You just steal that shit. Well, seeing someone the high man, you know what trap it is. Because when you, when you play someone the high man, you obviously what play that. He, what if he ignores... <laughs> Lothar looking at Gara is like, hey! Lothar, <laughs> judging by like Lothar's face expression, I mean uh, Gar's face expression, Lothar has to like. He was smiling a bit, but there might be a possibility of another Kisan. So like, if he if he read too much into that, you know, he wasn't too angry about that trap steal. But well, I, I still think like Kazan in uh, Freeze Mage is more surprising than Kazan in uh, in the Hunter. What what's happening? It's lagging. Oh no, no, it no it's the right person. Yeah. So instead of going for face, oh. he's going for the all right freeze. He wants to use that uh, freezing trap to his advantage. Is Makes it correct sense. though? It doesn't I'm, matter. I'm not sure. Um, he lost the frost bolt, so now yeah. Iceland is useless. It's not completely useless um, because you can um, use it with Blizzard or Antonidas, but 
Yeah. It's kind of worthless stealing the trap back right now. Yeah, because... Because he's going to attack with the Kazan, and then he's going to have another Kazan. I think just getting the dog. But then... I think, yeah, Unleash uh, is pretty good here. Like, this is as many minions as he will get. Mm, that's a strange. Well, this is 9 damage on board for Lothar. And... Uh, I think... Un Antonidas. Well, Antonidas frees the the lion. I think he will just play. Uh, uh, nice barrier and freeze the lion. I, I like it. Hmm. Because you still have the freezing trap. So Ice barrier. Yeah. I mean, Antonidas and Blizzard is pretty good. I think. Antonidas Blizzard. Oh yeah, that's actually pretty sick. And. Um, Iceland's face. You don't want an Iceland's face though, that much. It's fine. It's, it's like y it's just for the extra fireball, really. Uh, yeah. You can play fire b fireball and pyro blast next turn. Yeah, but the extra fireball, you have to assume that um, hun the hunter is gonna deal with the uh, with the creature somehow. He's not gonna yeah, kill you it. You still have lethal on board. Uh, in hand, I mean. Yeah, yeah. We'll Even if all the minions die, the the pyro blast will be uh, six and fireballs for free. Yeah, exactly. So you have so 16 points of damage. For 9 mana next turn. Alright, he goes for Antonidas and... Uh, he goes for Mad Scientist. He just knows that this game is over, so... Yeah, he still has lethal in, in hand. Yeah. So even if there is like a super weapon drawn by Hunter, the Bow of Eternity... Death point. No, he has not my, 9 mana. No, there is no card in the game right now to, to win this. Lothab might think that... Lower uh, Gora might think that Lothab can do anything here, but I mean, it's just prolonging the inevitable, you know. It's so interesting because he shouldn't play Kazan now. He should not show the Kazan. He shouldn't, no. He shouldn't. You conceal the Kazan. Oh, he's gonna get the ice block, maybe. That's actually pretty cool. But is it worth. I mean, it's a fancy play, but it's not gonna win you the game, like. Maybe it will. Yeah, but style points. Look at Lothar's face. It's like, oh, interesting. Oh, he <laughs> got the <laughs> ice block. <laughs> that's, that's cool, but it's, as I said, it's, it's really cool. Probably not going to do anything. I mean, it does have the Lothar, though. Actually, yeah. It might be tough anyway, like, because he, uh, Lothar is going to get him on one and uh, pop the block. And Lothar still has the ice barrier. Yeah. But now it's actually, I have to think a bit about this. I mean, your oh, ice definitely. barrier for sure. You want to kill everything on the board uh, as much as you can. Well, you still have the, the ice lens, so you're fine with that. Yeah. If he decides to trade, the what, do you, what is the best way to trade here? I mean, you, you, f you fireball twice to the face and uh, attack with the Kassan, and then you trade with uh, your Russian and... Uh, Antonidas and play Ice Barrier. Well, actually, if you just lance the the wolf, uh, the 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 lion. Yeah, yeah. And then you pyroblast the face, and you attack with Antonidas with, in yeah. the face. Why? No, why you not Kazan and then ping, and he's gonna be. No, at like one he home. doesn't have to be at one. You have Fireball. Like uh, I guess this so, is yeah. a hunter. He doesn't have counter spells. Well, actually, he has Lothab, So yeah. Yeah, that's why you pyroblast this turn. Uh, because you can't play Pyroblast next turn. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. Low tubs, but you can play Fireballs. I mean, it. I mean, just Iceland's the lion here. Uh, trade Kassan with Kassan. Yeah. It was a cute play by Gara. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not that sure if it's. Uh, I mean, it gave him a small chance to win but he did show his Kassan and that's like pretty huge in my opinion. Well the last deck for Lothar is Warrior so mm -hmm. it might not actually matter. It might not matter. <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> probably doesn't matter actually. <laughs> so yeah. Well it matters to the sense that right now Lothar will know that there is no Pilot Shredder. Like normally this deck is playing Pilot Shredder so maybe there is one Shredder, one Kazan. So something got cut for that Kazan. Yeah, but he's not gonna play any different just because he doesn't know that there is no Shredder, um, in my I think. So 
Yeah, we'll see. This is going to be a hard matchup with Kassans. I mean, generally, the, the mid-range hunter is pretty good versus uh, Warrior. Yeah. But with Kassans, I'm not so sure. Well, there is only one Kassans. So I'm not sure that the only one card yeah. will influence the matchup that much. He's using quick shots as well. And I'm not sure quick shot is the best uh, card for that matchup. It's not really good versus no. that matchup. All right, so Lothar is taking the lead 2-1 to one versus Gara. Uh, Gara on the ropes. And um, he's still... well. Gara still has two more decks. Like he has Shaman and a Face Hunter. So right now he can take the Shaman versus Warrior because that's a good matchup. Mm -hmm. And then Hunter is actually good versus Warrior as well. So maybe, again, Lothar will not be able to win with the Warrior at all. But yeah. we are not sure which Warrior is that. That might be the pattern. It probably isn't because no. he said that... Um, he was asking, one. yeah, he was asking for advice against the Green Pattern. That means he's not very experienced with it himself. So, yeah. I don't think he feels comfortable playing that deck before practicing it a lot. So it is a classic control warrior. Pretty good start from the hunter player though, I would say. Both players have a pretty good start actually. And that means that the favored deck is favored with a good start, which is hunter. Mm -hmm. I mean... Fire War X is like an exceptional to that, an exception to that rule. It's just so powerful, but I still think that uh, the the hunter player is favorite here. Um, yeah, boom on six or, or seven, and there is this um, hunt master. He's going to get a beast from um, the web spinner. So I like I like uh, playing the uh, Elon bow here uh, t and trading. Um, you play around that fire War X, and at the same time you might get a beast that you can play on turn three. I think I'm fine with Juggler, because then you will be able to coin Boom on 6, mm -hmm. which is super powerful. That is good indeed. And also there is not, uh, not a guarantee that Fireworks is there. Nope. You're right. Usually we always have them. <laughs> yeah, for some reason. Alright, so Armor Sim is out, which is important for, for Gara. Yeah. You can't play the Acolyte here, really. Uh, you will just die to the bow charge. He's gonna go ahead and do it anyway, I guess. I think he's doing that mostly because he just needs to filter cards. Uh, he doesn't feel like he's gonna. Yeah, but you can you can up. recycle a card with the shield block as well. I'm not sure if I like this, but Gara doesn't feel that bad attacking to it because just because he has a good bow. Ooh, uh, yeah. I think the reasoning is that shield block is really good versus high mains, so you want to keep shield block and shield slam uh, when the high main appears. Mhm. Mm now he needs to cycle that for sure. Well, that's no, not, not bad. Good. Yeah. All right. So five mana, possibly so six. He can actually play. Oh, that's a that great top spinner, deck. Yes. He, otherwise, he could have played the the Crocolis coin hand monster. But now he doesn't need to waste the coin, and he can use that next time for Doctor Boom. Yeah, that's actually a sick curve. Like, look at this. This is seven six power toughness and board turn five it's pretty insane uh, I do believe you it also grants you beast yeah uh, Sylvanas I think still is the play yeah I mean if you use shield slam and attack with weapon you have nothing else to do that turn uh, if you play Sylvanas then you're forcing your opponent to use his um, bow and the uh, 4-3 hound monster into the Sylvanas and then you can play Gorhal next turn um, and deal with whatever minion that pops out. I like including it. Including Dr. Boom. Yeah, especially because you have a lot of health. Mm -hmm. You you will be able to, to trade with minions. He's I thinking about shield slamming. I don't, li I, lo I don't like the fact that he showed that he had a shield slam uh, before he's actually going to use it, because that's a tell. Uh, and now Garan will know that he has a shield slam. Um, and it's not even a good position to use shield slam in. I no, I think that you just slam that Sylvanas on the board and hope for the best. Yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, he has to use 7 power uh, to deal with that Sylvanas. So it basically has taunt and 7 health. <laughs> he has to attack into Web Spinner, I think. Actually, he, do he doesn't have to. Um, he doesn't have to because uh, if there's no silence, he needs to make the trade. Uh, but it's... I don't know. Y you kind of want to use Gorehal the turn you play it and your charge will be wasted here. If you don't attack, so I don't know if attacking was correct play here or not. Well, looking at this, it was correct because right now uh, Gareth uh, D1 has to attack into Sylvanas with both minions. 
he is able to save 5 health because he will not have to use the ball. He doesn't need to attack uh, into the Sylvanas. He can actually just um, go for Animal Companion and flood the board and try to start racing him. And then trade whenever he feels like it's uh, That's like a problem. That's too weak yeah. to brawl. You, you it, is, it is weak to brawl and he saw that Lothar was playing double brawl yesterday but I'm pretty sure that he knows that Lothar removed that after the unsuccessful Warrior Mirrors yesterday. <laughs> but he, he decides to play around Brawl, and that is a really it's not a bad. T yeah, the, the Wolf. I mean, it's better in other matchups where you can actually get a few Hounds, but uh, it's still not it's that not bad. A, it's not a bad beast. Yeah. Not some kind of monkey. N not a lot of people expect it. All right, so there's no Brawl, and... There is that Gorhal. I don't think this is a Gorhal turn though. I think this is um, shield block, block, shield slam, slam, attack a bomb. Yeah. Well, yeah, you armor. If you if you shield slam, there's uh, nothing else you can do. Yeah. Attacking bomb is decent because you might want to get the death spite. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't see any reason not to attack the bomb here. I mean, there would have been some uh, justice if he had uh, Brawl in his hand or Whirlwind. Uh, but it hits for four. It hits for four. It would be so interesting if Lothar is able to go Gorhal into Alex Traza into Gromash Gorhal kill. <laughs> yeah, that would be the old school. Pretty good. The old school OTK Huffer. Well, there is half. Wow, he can actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> if he if okay. he if he plays um, Gorehowl here, or just Death Spite actually is enough. Um, do you think? Yeah, because it's sixteen. Yeah. yeah. Do you think though that the hundred can kill him in those two turns if he ignores everything? Uh, well, it is possible. Um, so if you double kill, kill command. Right now, 12, how much damage is this? Six, seven, 14. ten. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely possible to kill him in two turns for sure. So he has to recognize that threat. Um, you might. I think I would go for it. Like there is not really much else you can do here. You could groom into the the huffer. Play the play the defensive game, and then you whenever the seven high mains comes up, you can uh, cruel execute. Unless there is no fab. And then you will have trouble. Unless there is Lothab, but you can't play Lothab and a high main on one turn. You can always Gorhal a Lothab. I think just Gorhal and killing Huffer here is the play. Uh, you want to deny the beast. Oh, he's going to go for it. He's going to go for it. And the fact that he's not attacking uh, tells Gara either he has Brawl or he has Alexstrasza and Grumash for the kill in two turns. So, and he, and he didn't play anything because he reads that it's Brawl. There is no brawl though, uh, so the mind game, so to speak, kind of worked there for Lothar. Uh, Gara not committing to the board, and that's that actually if, he, if that he gets a hopper now. No, no, wait. That, that, I think that's it. Like you just create a hound, and that's um, two, yeah. ten kill command. That's oh, Leo. Yeah, Leo. There. Uh, even with Leo, like with just the Timberwolf and unleash the hounds. Yeah. that was enough with kill command. Oh man. Damn. And, and uh, Gar is able to take game number four. And we are going to have the fifth game, guys. What do you guys think Walter should have done differently here? I think he should have gone for the safe play and uh, used Grommage to kill off uh, Huffer and just play the, the long game. Because he had two executes. He had a crew task monster. He had Alex Strasa. So if he gored himself, he could also kill a lot of stuff and then Alex Strasa himself, you know. it's. I think he played that way too greedy. Uh, I mean, it reaching feels, everything on that all-in. It feels like that because at one point in the game it felt like 100 didn't have that many imp high impact cards, only mm -hmm. three mana and four, two mana. S and the warrior had a lot of health with a lot of armor and I thought that the Volter is gonna have, have that game, but yeah, they decided yeah. to go really greedy. Well, um, it's a risk. I respect those who take yeah, calculated definitely. risks. Uh, it didn't pay out this time. Maybe it will next time. Oh man, and we are going to enter the last game of this match. Gara versus Lothar, 2-2-2. Two two two. Best Shaman versus Best Warrior.
I guess he is 1 7 with Warrior for now. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, almost like Gorhau. The reverse Gorhau score. Yep. Illuminati confirmed. All right. If Lothar. Well, last time he was actually doing really bad with Warrior, but then he won the game that mattered and got him to here to the top 16. Mm -hmm. So if he wins this game with Warrior again, it will carry him to the top 8. That hand, though. Can he do that? We're about to find out. Shaman is a very, very hard matchup for Warrior. And with this hand, oh my god, Lothar is going to be crying Rest very soon. Bronies. Oh, come on. His plays from turn six are amazing. <laughs> yeah. Not I even guess. that amazing. <laughs> because <laughs> the, those are executes, not shield slams. Wow, Lothar wow. definitely wants the turn six. We've seen that happen to Moody before. Like, yeah, Warrior sometimes can draw really yeah, bad. Yeah, it can. It's really important as a warrior player to get uh, the coin and that extra card to mulligan for a better start. Uh, like, when this happens, there's nothing you can do. There's no decisions you can make that will have any consequence on the games because you, you're just like Fast. relying, yeah, you're relying heavily on your opponent just doing nothing, but that's not the case. He's not even gonna opt, he's opting to play a totem here instead of the Horus Golem. I'm not sure what he thinks about that. So I think it's uh, because the warrior as itself <laughs> is, works in a lot of, a lot of favor. Gara is playing around uh, weapons, around brawl. Like he doesn't want to overextend and go for face. He's playing safer. Yeah. And it's what we talked about before. Like if you have an advantage in the matchup, why risk it? Yeah, that's true. Uh, but well, if you would know the extent of <laughs> yeah. that. I mean, I have never seen a more green hero power button than right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> this is awkward. Lothar thinking about it though, trying to mind game his opponent into thinking he has a something, play. at least a play. I, I'm not even sure what he's trying to mind game me with because a weapon he would have played or he did at least hover into some cards. The most sad f part is that no. he doesn't even have the turn five play. It's yeah. like, how is this possible? <laughs> Never lucky, baby. You know, if if I was Lothar, I would probably hover over one card, which, which yeah. would kind of show that he have brawl, and maybe that would have stopped Gara from playing more stuff. And he's gonna <laughs> not keep keep flooding the board with totems. Do you think this is a misplay from Gara's side? Because he he's <laughs> surely a more experienced shaman player than me, but I would definitely have played my minions. And it kind of feels like we had the worst start possible, and Gara had a an insane opportunity to yeah 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 for to take advantage yeah. of that yeah mm -hmm. oh look that's a green card <laughs> it's like what is this uh, bug in the game can, can, can we call it a top deck because you can actually make a play he's so lucky getting the fire war axe top deck Gara is flipping his table with anger a guy had to like take a sip of water yeah. oh my god he played a card <laughs> baby rage well honestly though Right now, Lothar survived, and he didn't take any damage. He's in good shape, and now wow. it all comes down to the place. And he plays Arvus Golem now. I, I, I like this strategy from Gara. Like, uh, if you keep building up those totems, you are almost guaranteed to get that taunt totem every turn to prevent your opponent's weapon from being useful. Yeah. I mean, he, he surely has experience in this matchup. Definitely. But, wow. Even though from our perspective, like, people can say, yeah, Smork, like, just overextend, get the guy. Like, yeah. you can never know that. Just playing your strategy, just not getting into t territory which is unfamiliar to you. That's the best thing to do. So I like the Sylvanas play here. Yeah, Sylvanas is, uh, is decent because there is a board and uh, you can expect Fire Elemental. So Sylvanas will have to be taken care of. Uh, I mean, the reason I the reason I uh, want to play Silvanas here over Shield Maiden is because uh, next turn is Baron Geddon, so it doesn't really matter what minion you have because it's not gonna attack that t totem because you're gonna clear everything with Baron Geddon anyway. And yeah. Not, I mean, all the totems and stuff like that. So um, you rather get the, the Silvanas Hex or something than playing a Shield Maiden and that gets traded with stuff you want to kill with Baron Geddon. That's a very good line. Yeah. But I think it also supports um, the fact that it is kind of like preemptive Sylvanas. Like you play play her on board and you stop big minions from being played. Like you force your opponent to do something with her. So now it's really important here. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about the Death by play? Do you think that he doesn't see a, th a threat on the board that can do you 
damage to him because he's at 30 health even though it's turn 6 and he hasn't played anything. Yeah. So you kind of think that he can play that spite and it's not going to punish him. He so. wants to clear everything on the board on one turn. Um, but And he's going to do that by attacking twice with the... Um, the Death Bite and the second time play Baron Gedon. You don't want really want to play it right now, I think. Yeah, Gedon? You can play Gedon now. You, you can play Gedon, but I mean, if you wait one more turn, you can actually clear everything. Uh, so playing like a Shield Maiden here to uh, stall for a, some time is quite useful. But he's going to go ahead and do it right now. Uh, I'm leaving not sure two about Horus Golems. Would you prefer to kill the Horus Golem? I, I think I would attack the Horus Golem first and get the, the small spiders. Mm -hmm. Because of the. Of the ch um, durability from Deathbite and being able to kill the, the two ones. So Power Mace or Fire Elemental here. What do you guys think? Fire Elemental is awkward because you can attack with the Deathbite into Fire Elemental and mm -hmm. kill him and trigger both death yeah, rattles. Yeah, I agree. Uh, he just likes to tote him every turn. I mean, he's the expert. He's the best shaman in the world. He knows yep. what he's doing in this matchup. And I think it's a valid strategy. I mean, those those totems, they did stop weapon attacks. And uh, if he has a taunt, like, look, look, if you would get a taunt here, that would be very What do you good. think about uh, Grimash face and <laughs> Smork the face with everything, dealing 40 points of damage, leaving him at 7? Then you top the Gorhal and win next turn. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> he has you a top the Gorhal, and you can, uh, you can execute all the taunts if you want to. So like, we know he has a heal bot, but uh, he doesn't know that. So the question is, has uh, the Harvest Golem been played before? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it so was played If he attacks into it, he's going to um, kill the leftover minion. Yeah, but I think he will be uh, attacking face uh, and using Crew Taskmaster or something to deal with the damage Harvest Golem. You don't execute the Harvest Golem? What? Uh, not really. Oh, there's, there's the brawl. There's finally, the first... Wow, and this is actually looking pretty bad now for Gara. Maybe he did play too passively with making totems every turn. I mean, if he would have played Fire Elemental uh, a long time ago or Flame Tongue Totem, he would have pressured him so much more. He would have maybe been able to kill him by now. Well, Gara was able to play Harvest Golem on 3. He just stood him up. He was able to play a Flame Tongue Totem, totem on 4. He didn't do that. Or like mm -hmm. even Harvest Golem. Yeah. If Lothar wins this match after seeing that hand and having a... It works on five as the only legit play. Yeah, <laughs> that would be impressive. That would be, yeah. I mean, like, I think that shows that Gara maybe had the wrong strategy for this matchup after all. Uh, I mean, if you can't win a favored matchup when your opponent has nothing to play but a fire works on turn five, I think what uh, it's like transpired here is that Gara had a standard strategy versus a warrior that ha has a normal hand, like. Taskmasters, Fireworks, mm -hmm. Armorsmiths, where Lothar had a super top heavy hand, and that strategy applied to that hand of Lothar. But I, I, I do bad. think that you should be able to win against a worse hand than the, than the standard good warrior hand. Uh, so your strategy should be as good, if not even better, against the worst hand of the warrior. So I have this kind of question. You're telling that he was playing against a normal kind of warrior, but um, he hasn't played anything on turn 2, which should have showed that he doesn't have a fiery war axe or armor smith or anything. So why why do you think he hasn't done that? Because he already should have known that it's not he doesn't have the good hand. Because those, um, uh, yeah. those are the most popular places. Touché. Touché. That, that actually counters my, my logic here. Maybe maybe then uh, he was really playing around Brawl and wanted to get the totem value. Yeah, so this is a shield made in execute turn. Hero power. Pretty easy. Um, Pretty powerful as well. Yeah, it actually if if he gets in if he gets a uh, second kill task monster, it's actually lethal next turn with Grimosh. Look, I'm looking at this and I have no idea how Gara can come back from this point. I think that if he gets Doctor Boom and his heavier minions, it it can work out. But it's like Neptulon is quite good as well uh, with all the Murlocs. Uh, like as long as they don't get too much brawl value. Uh, but I mean, ugh, this is. Well, just building up the board. All right, so Taskmaster is the finish. Mm, that's not it. That, that's a two drop. It's a two drop. A little bit too late. Can you do something with your Sylvanas? Not really. 
executed. <laughs> yeah. I like I like Sylvanas here though. Um, I like Sylvanas and I like playing the armor smith and uh, hero powering. I not sure if you should go face or trade with the six four. I mean, you, you do see a power mace in your opponent's hand, so removing a mech is actually quite important. I like going face because Lothar is, is putting guards as well then, and Lothar is super secure at like 24 and 40 armor. Oh, right. he fishes for cards instead of playing the Sylvanas. I guess this is actually quite nice, playing the Belcher and the armor smith. The reason he's not killing that um, golem is because uh, he feels like he needs to use it to trade with the Belcher, and then he can execute anyway, whether it's buffed or not. Yeah. Alright, so Lothar going with the strategy of Belcher, Armorsmith. Very nice and very annoying for your opponents. And he but does have a double lightning storm right now, so he yeah. can carry the board if he's lucky enough. I guess you roll for a totem. Spell them so them because you can afford to play um, you can afford to play the flame tongue as well uh, with double lightning storm if you want to do you really double lightning storm if you get a totem no it depends on the totem of course but I mean you have that option then I mean uh, at this point the armor is irrelevant because you can shield them uh, like even if you give him six more armor or whatever. I yeah, guess this is so much armor. Still attrition war. Uh, do you? Well, you are also at twelve. So do you consider Taskmaster Grumash? You've seen one Taskmaster. Yeah, I mean, before. the thing is that if you roll for a totem here, uh, you might get spell power and you might get taunt. Both are pretty useful, you know. Uh, so I would say that's the play. Uh, he's gonna go ahead and earth shock that. All right. So Gara rolling. So he's totem. not gonna roll for totem then. Apparently. I would say like Gara rolling for totem every turn from the beginning of the game refuses to roll for totem. Oh, oh. that's actually pretty funny. Zombie Chow for double heal. <laughs> well, he's going to get more spiders. Yeah, but that's uh, spider. Oh my god! Double the spiders, double the excitement. Brawl boys. Brawl boys. <laughs> it's actually gonna bite him here. Uh, I mean, this is kind of funny. If this is not a brawl, then what is? Armor Smith is on the board. You'd obviously brawl this, and Armor Smith that survives. Kit gets always lies. Come on, Kit so This is kind of ironic how he played around brawl all the time, and now he didn't, and he has the brawl in his hand. Yeah. I would like to talk to Gara after this match and uh, and ask what was going through his head when he was playing the Shaman game. What did he expect? Expect what he thought Lothar actually has in his hand. This looks pretty bad for Gara. Yeah, I mean, just after just brawl here, right? Yeah, yeah like I after the brawl, they're attacking the totem and brawl. Forded cards. So Good. where's what's the worst case? The five five survives. Yeah, and I'd say, but uh, you don't care about it that much. You can just equip the weapon, armor up, and pass after. You know what's the worst case? If Baron survives, then Gara is actually playing a. Brain carnage. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, guys. This is the moment of the brawl. Were you attacking the totem first, though? No, nah, it doesn't matter. Mm. It actually. You still have the weapon. Yeah, but. All right, so spider survived. The Lothar is going ham. Mm. Looking for that cruel task monster. All right, and top deck for Gar is a par mace. This is so bad. He has, oh. he has three, almost like four dead cards. Yeah, I I would really love to see the the lightning storms that game keep your uh, sky golem alive. Too bad there is no some kind of replay feature in Hearthstone. I would have loved to replay this game, but mm -hmm. differently to yeah. see what. Well, how would it go with the same outcome that Gara they had? They had l that one in uh, in StarCraft, where mm -hmm. you could uh, replay a scenario from a certain point in a game, see if you could done anything better. Quite useful. Oh, that would actually be amazing for Arson. Mm -hmm. I would love to play this this game as Gara being super aggressive. All right, so for Lothar, uh, he still has 
very good situation here. Just looking at the two ones. I mean, Gara is still to top deck uh, one of his legendaries. I'm not sure which one is running, but I would assume uh, Neptulon is in this deck. Uh, I would assume Alakir, maybe, Dr. Boom. Like, Maybe not all three, but at least two of them. Do you think that the fact that Lothar played yesterday for the whole day, he was able to warm up himself for the day, is uh, helping him? Were Gara ac actually playing the first match of this tournament? <sighs> I'm not actually sure. It's harsh enough after all. It's not like you need the mechanics, but you know. You need to get into the right mindset. And Lothar was in the right mindset yesterday. He was winning all those games. Mm, yeah, not that, not that it be. did a lot. It probably Lothar. wouldn't. It probably wouldn't for a lot of players, but maybe in this case, practice might have been useful for Gara. All right, this is really tough. Sky and Golem is nice. Doctor Boom is nice here. Anything with a mech that would. Neptulon. There's Neptulon. Uh, Not a Mac though. Well, he might still be in game here. Um, we do see a BJ's in his opponent hand though. I love to see what kind of Murlocs he gets. He's going to get so many fishes. Fishes. So much fish. So actually, much fish. this is actually really important for Gara. Uh, what Murlocs he, he he will get from that Neptulon, because he can actually s change this around again towards the shamans. Well, Lothar still needs just one enabler for Grimash. Like a death. Did he, did he use double death spite? Mm, I think he used nice one. Nice one, yeah. One Taskmaster. Uh, uh, not, not bad, actually. Not bad, yeah. Not bad. Um, I think it could could have been much better. Call it Oracle. Mm. Okay, so it's 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 all right. I think he has to play Flame Tongue. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. You want to stay about 12 health. Blue will be important to deal with the BGH. Oh, yeah, I mean, he can just Lightning Storm as well. Um, I would assume that he's going to play BGH and Sylvanas. That's actually quite awkward because um, that Flame Tank Totem is going to get stolen if he decides to Lightning Storm and hit the Sylvanas. I really like the Murlocs he got from Neptulon though, because he has a The Murloc War Leader is always good. Yeah. So there is a quite nice play here you can do. You can Lightning Storm here, and uh, you can attack the Sylvanas with your weapon, and uh, then you can uh, use uh, Blue Gill Warrior with uh, the Murloc War Leader to kill off the Searing Totem that gets stolen. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I was thinking maybe use Bluegill to ki to like attack Savannah's then Lightning Storm and then uh, kill the totem with your weapon. I think that might be better because like yeah, you don't take damage, but then your Bluegill dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the difference. And I think at this point, you have to play really greedy to come back into this game and keep all your minions and just hope that it doesn't have that Grimash Cool Taskmaster, which in fact it doesn't right There's now. There's one problem though. He doesn't have mana for that play. Oh, he's overloaded by three. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. He doesn't have... No. He needs eight mana for that play. He's only at seven. Taunt Totem. Really good. So he, he wants him to steal the Searing. And he does. Nice. Because... He's going to pass, though. Dr. Dr. Boom. Boom. Oh. Well, that's a great card to play. Yeah. Always a great card. He's debating which side he should play it on, but it truly does not matter in this case. Inches are more up and pass again. If is Gara playing healbots? Have we seen healbots? Yeah, one healbot. One healbot. Heal heal well, healbot will be important to get back. Ooh, Azure Drake, Lightning Storm, is that something not... Mm, yeah, it's it's alright. Uh, I mean, I, you think it's alright, but it's pretty bad because one of the bombs can kill the totem and then he's gonna have a way to kill him. Uh, yeah, like no, he doesn't have the damage to kill him even if the totem dies. Because he, he has too much armor to shield slam his own Grimash. It will actually kill him. What if he top decks anything that can... Yeah, of course. If he top decks anything, then... 
that's that. But do you think that was Gar's strategy from the very beginning to like allow Lothar to armor up every turn so that he does <laughs> he has so much armor to kill Grimash? So, so he shield slams his own Grimash by mistake. I doubt that, but you know, next level mind games maybe. Oh man, the stress. So champion Gara, the winner of DreamHack one, the finalist of second DreamHack Bucharest, on the brink of elimination, facing Doctor Boom. Oh. Rock Biter is not doing much. And bombs can like screw him over completely. Well, losing the Taunt Totem was painful, and right now, Lothar is so close to winning this game. Oh, well, this is intense. A simple Fairy War Axe was enough. Oh, he got, he oh my god, here's the Cruel Disc Master. He gets the Disc Master, he doesn't have mana for it this turn. He needs a Taunt Totem. He needs a Taunt Totem! What is happening in this game? Can Gara actually lose and get eliminated? Can Lothar advance? I think you executed the Drake here. Because there is a possibility of Argus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's if fine. He ha if he gets an Argus now, that's a, like really good. Okay, oh, so that's that, wait before he totems here. If he has Sludge Belchers in the deck, is it more likely for him to draw them with the Cold Light Oracle? I don't know, but this is not the totem he was looking for. No, nope. so Sludge Belcher is now out of option. I think you still. Well, you can't. Why? That's it. That's it, Lothar has lethal, ladies and gentlemen. If Lothar spots lethal, <laughs> and he does, he is going to eliminate Gar from this tournament. Tavern Tales, guys, what is happening? I think Gar is really upset uh, for playing that game too passively in a, in a matchup that is Shaman favored. Uh, I want to talk to those guys. I want to ask Gar what happened. I want to talk to Lothar and hear his words. He's going to face Impact to take revenge after Impact mm -hmm. winning versus Life Coach. Yeah, that was an incredibly interesting game, especially the mindset that Gar was going into the this matchup. I'd love to hear what he says, but I probably have to keep now, right? Yeah, thank you so much, Stroll, yeah, thank, thank you for thank joining you. us. Really nice we might have you here. later as well. Thank um, you very much, guys. I enjoyed it. It was a pleasure. Yep. All right, thank so you. now we are going to talk to uh, to Lothar. Uh, can, you, can you please get Lothar to, uh, for us? Uh, oh, man, that's serious. Garbus Shaman defeated. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I think he came down to that last match. I, I think Loder is super happy winning this one with such an unfavored matchup, but uh, we'll see what he has to and say. And that hand? Yeah, that with, th with hand, that hand. Dude. Like, holy shit. I haven't seen. <laughs> it was insane. We had so much fun with that hand, yeah. and, and then that happens. So uh, I think we, both players are here. Yeah, Loder, yeah. come here. Come here. We want to talk to you. Here we go. Take that, man. So first, Hi, guys. congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Congrats, man. You advanced to the top you. eight. You are going to face Impact. Tell us more about this match. What happened there? Oh, the last match, when I saw my opening hand, I was like, okay, this is, this is over. probably this is over. Come on, there was, you had a lot a lot of good cards, like six yeah, mana. Like like you got Gadon. Come on. If I would draw like eight innovates <laughs> for free, yeah, then I could have won it. Yeah, like is it? Yeah, w you you didn't see uh, Gara's hand, but they actually had an insane curve, like uh, with the um, with the Horus Golem on turn three and like Flame Tongue and other plays after that. But he just hero powered every turn. Yeah, I know. I tried to bluff him with not playing the Fury Warriors because I didn't have it. Yeah, like, turn yeah, yeah. four, I was thinking about my play and I pointing at cards. Yeah. When I didn't have it, yeah. anything to we, play. We noticed that. Yeah. yeah I was like. Maybe that worked. I don't know. Probably it did. So I think he played very, very passively, too passively. Me? Uh, no, 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 no. no. Gara, no Gara, you Gara you had nothing passively. to play. Yeah, I was like <laughs> yeah. resident sleeper. Yeah, yeah, but Gara, he he had all those great plays to pressure you early on. He had like fireman and stuff, but he refused to play him. He just towed him up every turn, and I was like, is this how you play Shaman versus Warrior? Because yeah, I was like, probably not. Gara is the is more experienced with this match, but shot. I don't know. Like this is never how I would play it. I just yeah. pressure the the I warrior would, so much. I would do the same. Yeah, like curve out, yeah, exactly. for the win to push out the damage. But, uh, with all the fear works so I think I think that actually lost in the game that it didn't play as most people would play in that matchup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tell us more about Kazan Mystic and Freeze Mage. Uh, well, I thought that guy will be using at least 
at least one class with secrets, maybe even two, and I was not wrong. He, uh, mm -hmm. No, wait, I was wrong. Only one class. Well, no. never mind. Uh, I was kind of thinking he might play uh, Freeze Mage, maybe. If not Freeze Mage, then probably Mech Mage, if he would pick the Mech Mage at all. And uh, I thought to myself, like, that Kazan Mystic instead of a Loot Horror doesn't really punish me in the way you it, do, it, it will usually do in other decks because, you know, I don't really care about one card. Mm -hmm. I still have other card draw mechanic uh, in the deck and it can instantly win me the mirror match. It can win me the game against free, uh, against Hunter and, uh, well, <laughs> that's uh, basically it. Well, that's yeah. enough reasoning. I'm sold. It's an interesting uh, inclusion. Yeah, I think that um, Kassan is not too useful. Like, people are talking about uh, you can always steal back your ice block, but good players will always play Kassan on the turn where you kill your freeze mage by stealing yeah. the ice block. Yeah, yeah. So it's not really how it works. No, uh, for me it's a win card. When yeah. he plays aggressively because he has ice block up, then I just play Kazan and mm -hmm. Fireball hit the face. And that's yeah, it. but in, 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 uh, in freeze mage it's like, yeah. yeah. I, have, I've, I haven't seen Gara play too much freeze mage though. Like, did you really Gara think plays everything. That's the problem. Like building my lineup against Gara um, was hard. Was hard. Mm. I, I thought maybe he would bring Druid with ma ma with mass ramp because he would think I would bring aggro lineup this time. So you know. Yeah, Gara is one of those players that actually plays everything, brings mm -hmm. new things, brings all things, and uh, or even goes with all anti aggro lineups. Yeah, like he brought midrange hu midrange hunter. This is the first time I've seen midrange hunter in like three weeks, I believe. Yeah. Yep. I was thinking about it that he might bring it, so I brought Agro Hunter just because of that. To that you know, interesting version with like quick yeah. shots as well. It was like really weird, I think. Yeah, but w <laughs> what about the Warrior versus Hunter? I was like, okay, I go for the yeah. old retro OTK style. Yeah, that's style. what we were talking <laughs> about, like really old school version, but uh, yeah, it didn't pay off. Yeah, well, the bomb for four sealed the de sealed the deal. Yeah, yeah, that's the true. The, yeah. the bomb that hit my face was for four damage, and maybe he did have additional damage in his uh, hand. I mean, he he had uh, he didn't attack with the bomb uh, on the board, which was two damage as well. So it was like if the bomb hit for two, that would also have been lethal. Yeah. Well so it's like pretty so likely. Really, really good strategy there with like well Gohao. I, st I still like thought Strata. that I have no outs. He will just grind me out playing mm -hmm. weapons and giving myself damage doesn't really make sense. I have to win somehow, so I just went all in. I mean, you did ha uh, you did have uh, two executes for uh, Savannah High Mains, and you had already dealt with Dr. Boom, and you had Alex Strass yeah. in your hand, so you could actually trade a lot with your Gore Howl and Alex Strass yourself uh, for good value. I still think that's really It was a risky. calculated risk, yeah. both of them. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, Different I lines of play. Yeah. All right, so um, congratulations. You're going you. to advance, as I said, and uh, really well played. And I'm definitely... You wanted to talk with Gara too, right? Um, uh, we're ready for break. Yeah, we're we ready to talk to him privately. Yeah, definitely. Oh, okay. we're, we're going to brief him privately. So, um, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we are still By the going way, to continue. One last thing I wanted to say. That's the second time we play against. Uh, I play against Gara and Johan Bucharest, but the last time was quarterfinals. So we met like... Mm. One I one mentioned one. that yeah. briefly. Yeah. So okay. the more so important for Lothar to actually win that match and advance. Uh, we're going to continue with our... Um, next uh, with our brackets, but for now we're ready for break, so guys, we're going to be here, don't go anywhere. <laughs>